Andy from So Saves Me, and today I'm going to talk to you about sergers and my favorite sergers. Lots of people have asked me, do you own a serger and which serger do you own? And today I'm going to kind of brush in on a little bit of that to lead into later on videos to tell you how to use these vintage sergers, what they're used for, what kind of stitches they are, why I like them, their pros and cons. So sit back, get a cup of coffee, and let's talk sergers this morning. So if you're new to sergers and you're thinking to get a vintage serger from the late 70s, early 80s, you know, an all-metal, high-quality machine, I'd probably recommend you don't. If you're new to it, you don't quite understand how sergers work, what they can do for you, a vintage is probably not for you. Most of these machines, again, early on, they were just trying to figure out how to get these into the homes. They're hard to thread. The documentation is usually poor on them. They don't offer a lot of options. They're pretty much locked to a single stitch or a single width. If you're new to serging, I recommend a Brother 1034D. They're very easy to use. There's lots of documentation on them. There's lots of people that use them. Lots of guides on how to work with them. I'm not going to bother with videos on this. There's plenty of them out there. They are nice machines. The tension's easy to set up. They do multiple stitches. Four thread overlock, three thread overlock. They can do a flat lock. They're just an all-around great purpose machine. I've used mine for two or three years. However, if you buy one of these, just go ahead and assume that you're going to be buying a new one every few years. They do have plastic in them. They are built pretty good. I've torn mine apart multiple times to oil and service it to keep it going. And in the end, honestly, this one's getting sloppy. It didn't make a difference. I found out that the overlock finger and the foot are designed to wear out over time regardless of what you do. The foot and the overlock finger is roughly $90 for replacements. I only paid $180 for the machine. So buy one, use it. I'd love to say that I didn't get my $180 because Brother's not my favorite, but I did. This machine has ran a lot of thread. I think this is the 10th set of cones on it. It's just now starting to get sloppy. Highly recommend these for new people. As far as vintage machines, there are a lot of vintage machines. I don't know a ton about all of them. I have seen some Jukies. I've used some Whites. I think out of all the, all the vintage machines I've used, I like the Recars the best. They're semi-industrial. They're heavy. They have all metal parts. They're, they're just a great quality machine. However, their documentation is very poor. It is awful. Like two pages tells you what parts you got and kind of a halfway way to thread them. I mean, they're awful. If I wouldn't have used my brother and learned how sergers work, I would have probably never been getting, been able to get one of these to work the way I wanted to. So here's my first one. And a lot of people think that sergers, when you say a serger, they automatically assume it's a four thread overlock or a three thread overlock. And that's not always true with sergers. In my opinion, sergers is a wide variety of machines that do more than one thing in a single operation. For example, these sergers do trim the edge of the material while they stitch, and it saves a lot of time, especially if you're cutting. I mean, I've been known to cut up a pattern, put it on the material, and I don't even trim around the edges. I just stick it all together, run it through my serger, and let it cut the edges, pattern and all. So there's a cheesy way to do things that's quite a bit faster. The Recar 320 is a two-thread serger. It is not a three-thread or a four-thread. It is a two-thread. This machine does a two-thread flat lock and a two-thread edge stitch. I particularly like this machine because it has a single looper. It's fairly easy to thread, but that looper has a huge hole. You can run floss through it. I've ran yarn through it. Uh, heavy, heavy threads through it. It makes a really interesting decorative stitch, and I'll show you those in the future. Here's a good one. The three-thread is just a three-thread overlock. There's nothing fancy with this particular model. A 333 can do a three-thread overlock or a three-thread rolled hem. However, I am missing the plate B for this machine. So if anybody has one of these plate Bs, get a hold of us. I would love to buy it off of you. I've been searching for two years, and I have not been able to find the plate B for the Recar 333. Otherwise, this is just a pretty much plain Jane three-thread overlock. It can, it can do some flat locking. If you change the tensions, you can flat lock with a three thread. However, I prefer to use a two thread. It looks nicer. You get ladders. I like it better. I'll show that later in the future. This one here, I'm going to show as well how to thread it, what it's used for, what I use it for. A three thread, you know, why people ask, why would you use a three thread when you've got a four thread? Well, a three thread is narrower. 
It may not be as strong as a four thread, but it's narrow, less bulky, uh, uses less thread. Uh, there is some instances where three thread is just handy. If you haven't already noticed, you're starting to see a scheme in Ricars. You notice the bodies are shaped the same. They're all got nice handles. The tensions are about the same. I mean, these are literally duplicate machines. The, the beds, the sizes, everything. That's one reason why I went with this type, because I can get multiple different sergers in the exact same size. And I made me a desk that they all fit into, and I can swap machines around without having 10 sergers set up. I can keep them on a the shelf, pull them down when I want to use them. So here's a 340. And it's a very interesting machine on the aspects that if you've ever looked on the inside of the jeans, you notice the seam has like an edge on it and then this funky stitch right behind it, it's a chain stitch. This machine does a two thread chain stitch and a two thread edge stitch. It's perfect for jeans. It's designed to run really heavy thread, Tex 60, Tex 127, I mean real heavy duty stuff. And then the edge stitching itself is designed for lighter weight threads, you know, like you would normally find on sergers. The machine can be, can be set up for a two thread only. Like the 320, it can do a two thread edge stitch or flat lock. However, the looper on this one's not quite as heavy. So you can't put in yarns, bigger thick materials. And then it can also be set up for just the two thread chain stitch. And I've used that for sewing patches together and things like that. And it's, it works really well. It's not as bulky as an overlock. So there's a an interesting solution right there. So here's a serger that doesn't do an overlock at all. It does an edge stitch and a chain stitch. And there are vintage sergers that do that. As far as modern sergers that do that, I'm unaware of any, but I've never really done any research on it. I wanted all heavy duty iron, you know, clad machines that aren't gonna die on me. Now I actually have two of these and they are the Ricars 343s. This is a four thread overlock, nothing super fancy again. You can, however, set this one up to do a three thread, but as you see, I've got four spools, one, two, three, four. I keep it four thread, and this one's got white. This one's just plain Jane, four thread overlock. It doesn't do anything fancy. You can set it up for a wide three thread or a narrow three thread. As far as the Ricars goes, like the brother, I can change the width of the stitch, and I can use a four thread or a three thread with that width changing. Cars are pretty much static, and you'll find that with most vintage machines. They're a static stitch. You really can't change the width. Uh, you can change the length quite a bit, but they're pretty much what you see is what you get, hence the reason why I have so many of them. Which moves us on to the last one in my army of these things, and this is a 343DR. You notice I have black thread on this one. I actually have two, two of these guys that they're overlockers. The DR, the only difference between him and the other one is the DR. Differential feed, which I will get into in more detail in the future. And if you don't have differential feed, I highly recommend getting a machine that has it. And then the R, which is a rolled hem. Not a huge fan of rolled hem. I don't use it much. It's interesting, but I've always felt that there's better solutions. A rolled hem was always just kind of a cheap solution to me. When you put it, when you use rolled hems on clothing, it just kind of looks cheap. I, I don't know. I've never really liked rolled hem. It's okay for like maybe a tablecloth that you don't really see it. It's close to the floor, but on clothing, I'm not a fan. The brother, I will mention this, the new modern brothers, they do do differential feed and it does do a rolled hem. And, it is a lot easier to set the rolled hem up on the brother than it is on something like this. This guy, I do have the plate for it. You actually have to swap out the needle plate to do a rolled hem. The brother, you just pop out a little finger with a button, you're on rolled hem. Super simple. So as far as setup on these vintage machines, it's more difficult. That's why I have so many of them. It's like this one's already set up the way I like it. The other four thread is set up with white the way I like it. The three thread. It's set up a black. I would like to have a Recar 330, which I do not have. I haven't been able to locate one of those for a decent price. I don't mind paying the $50 shipping, but I've seen a few here and there on eBay, but they wanted $300 for the machine. And in my opinion, these are not that $300 machines. They're in the wild, needing serviced, motors cleaned up, things like that. Maybe $50 in my opinion. I mean, they're worth $50.
serviced, cleaned up, oiled, ready to go. If they ship it to me, I can just plop it down on my desk and use it. Sure, 200 bucks all day long. They're good quality machines. But be warned on vintage machines. Go look up the book. Read it. If it's confusing, go get a brother first. Get something more modern. The documentation on the brother is much better. They have tutorial videos that come with the machine on DVD. There's lots of YouTubes that you can find on it. I would start with the brother if you've never owned a serger before. If you're going to be serging spandex and knits, you might want to consider make sure the machine has a differential feed. If you don't have differential feed, knit material bunches up on the seam. You really do need differential to make it look really clean. Otherwise, if you have any questions, be feel free to hit us up on Facebook or YouTube and have a good morning. Thanks for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Watch more videos about other awesome vintage sewing machines on this channel. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Etsy. We love hearing from you and if you have ideas for future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Happy sewing!